Welcome to the Nerdiverse. Go ahead, sit and listen to the masters, the old heads, talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain your We got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please uh, send in a question. Come and get some answers. Learn a couple less from the masters with the special guests. We got the green lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax. Cause we're gonna hit you with them stole cold facts and allow me to be the very first to welcome you to the masters of the nerdiverse welcome to masters of the nerdiverse where we always have such sites to show you this tootsie roll pop of a podcast can be found on itunes stitcher spreaker soundcloud youtube iHeartRadio, and google play I'm, of course, your host, Mike G, and with me, as always, is the cool also host of this beautiful show, Winter Trash Monk the Third. Hey, hey, everybody. It is Trash Monk the Third, or in other circles, it's Trash Monk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming at you at the Trash Bunker. Nice. Uh, I is that going to be a thing now? You think? Just call it the trash bunker. It sounds good to me, my man. It sounds yes. clean. Yeah, it sounds like you have yes. like a. I uh, have been. Yeah. Sorry. Go for uh, it. I'm uh, what you? I've been. Say <laughs> it. I messed up. Uh, I've been having good conversations with young people today, and they called me a basic hoe. I don't know what that means, but okay. Damn. Uh. They just saw that I buy a lot of Amazon Basic. <laughs> so they said, you basic, you all hear basic, Doug? That's what they told yeah. you? Yeah. And I said, get out of here, kid. Dang. You shoot him away like a 1920s gum shoe. Just kicked him out, kick, kicked him out of your press. No, I beat him up like a 1950s. <laughs> Bare knuckle boxer? <laughs> yeah. I almost said father. Damn. Okay. That's, that's real darker. And we're <laughs> You got to hit them with the uh, orange. You got to fill a sock full of oranges so they don't I burn. Didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't say, that's all you. I did not say that. I didn't say that either. <laughs> Bing Crosby said that, Doug. <laughs> I, didn't say, I didn't say that. Imagine either. being imagine being Bing Crosby's child. That's a rough life, Doug. G- Hashtag rough life. Yeah. Um, if you don't know who Bing Crosby is, uh, <laughs> folks, he's the guy... That was blackface in that one movie yeah. that no one watches anymore. Yeah, that's uh, once again hashtag rough life, my man. <laughs> oh, never look up a cartoon called uh, what is it? Song of the South. <laughs> Not for all that subject. Yeah, oh, do it, children. <laughs> but still watch the Aristocats. Watch the Aristocats. <laughs> watch Dumbo. Watch all those horrible things that will no longer fly in our political yeah. correct society, Doug. Okay, but I'll throw this at you. Couldn't you be, you know, the conscious parent and go, isn't that weird that that bird is talking like that? <laughs> or why why would they, why would they do that? And make your make your kid the one have the racist thoughts. No, man. <laughs> Back then, I'm sure there was at least two or three moms that were like, Mm-mm, this don't fly. But then they were known as the hippies and weirdos, man. Back when <laughs> hippie, he just call, you just called half of our audience weirdos. Well, we're all nerds, and a weirdo is just a darker nerd. Right? It's a like darker a, nerd, yeah, like darker and not in, but like in, like in text, like contextual. I can hear the people reen over here. <laughs> Re- yeah, man, a weirdo's cool, dude. Tim but you Burton. asked how my week was. So. <laughs> I was gonna, and I'm just going to end by my foot being in my mouth and saying Tim Burton's a weirdo, Doug. Well, you're not throwing any hard punches. No. <laughs> you know. uh, so, yeah, my week is pretty <laughs> good. Um, okay. I, <laughs> I did a second draft to... Uh, <laughs> The second part of our multi-part project. Yeah, we got to get more this cryptic. off the ground. Yeah, we we got to get this off the ground, my man. Like, <laughs> I don't know how much more cryptic I could get out of that. 
Um, oh. I'm looking into getting a webcam. I think I'm just going to do the Logitech 920, which it, I read on in an art, two articles. That's the best webcam for your buck. Uh, will I be doing things on Monday with the webcam? Maybe. <laughs> do you have to buy coins for said webcam? <laughs> Oh, what do you got going on over there, man? <laughs> Don't worry about it, Jack. Uh, I'm not going to ask no questions going forward, but man, good luck to you and all. Good luck to you. Guys. I need the money. I'm not bad, dude. Hey, I'm not, I would never knock someone else's hustle, my dude. Get them coins. <laughs> there is definitely some hustling going on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. I'm just kidding, folks. Yeah, it's definitely going to be something nerdy related, I predict. Well, you can still make that work. <laughs> just put some glasses on. You know, <laughs> you know, the little uh, pocket protector. You'll get coins. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so but how, how was your week? My week was up and down as hell, my good man. Uh, my week was kind of nutty. So... Uh, the other podcast I was talking about, we were talking about uh, Hades, the uh, the new game that came out during the Game Awards, which is made by Supergiant Games, makers mm-hmm. of Bastion and Transistor and all those cool games. And I was I I kind of would say like, oh yeah, those games are cool. I don't play them, but I just love the soundtracks. It made me feel like a poser. I was like, dude, I, I should give the, well, at least one of these games a chance. So. I forgot that I just had Transistor just on my PS4, like one of those, like just in just just buried under games, and I just was like, I'm gonna take some time and just play this game, like just give right. it a shot, and not just listen to the soundtrack. And I beat it over the weekend, or between last week and this week, and it was a really fun, different game, man. Uh, uh, their style is super weird it's like it's almost like tabletop it's almost like a, a rts kind of like into the breach if you know what that is or like final fantasy tactics almost okay it's really like you can you can gun you can like uh run and gun it if you want but you're gonna get served you have to pause the the game and strategize your attacks and think about it more than two seconds uh and it just i it was just a really fun ride the game was beautifully done um and the, of course the soundtrack just kind of hit hits more to home when it's like you can see it in action rather than just listening to it so i mainly wanted to beat that game because i wanted to prepare myself for hades because i really want to play that uh and see what kind of new music i can attach myself to so i beat transistor and it's probably my favorite game of the of this quarter you know, but I, I'm have I had a lot of fun with it, uh, so I did that. Uh, also, I watched the holiday special for the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, mm-hmm. and I'm, that was pretty good. Uh, it's kind of uh, TV shows have this thing where the first ten minutes is pretty much just a water a boiled down kind of uh, explanation of the first season, and it's just kind of very top heavy. It's like, hey, I did yeah. this because this happened in episode Hey, five. you shouldn't do that because last year we did and then it just, <laughs> Right, and they just go yeah. off. Exposition. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, guys, I get it. This is for anyone who hasn't seen the first season. And it's just so heavy. It's like, it's so purposeful that the actual episode doesn't start till halfway through the show because the first half is like catching everyone, everybody up. You know what I mean? It's just really, it's really silly how they do that. But it's okay. I'm curious to see where the show goes. Um, kind of, I kind of don't like how gingerly they throw about throw about certain things about the show, but I'll leave that to people's imagination to what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, uh, yeah. So, um, so now we move on from <laughs> uh, this could be called the the uh, winter deep in thought <laughs> section. <laughs> okay, go for it. I, I have a deep in thought myself, so not yeah. This out, this this could be like a whole section. Where you have the like chime in the the violin chords. Yeah, okay, that sort of thing. Nice. So my deep reflection this week was on how 
my entire mindset was I would never in my life get a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> and then something, something clicked like last night. And this is the, uh, this is me just reading articles, and I see scroll down like, what's this about Nintendo Online three ninety nine? Oh, that's a pretty good deal. And then yep. I go scroll down even more, and it goes, yep. Um, they're re releasing classic Nintendo games. Okay, yep. that's pretty cool. I mean, yes, I can I can illegally do the ROMs if I if someone was a criminal, which I'm not. Right. right. Um, and then I go. Well, they support online multiplayer for the <laughs> original mm-hmm. NES games. Yep. And then cue the music. Here come the money! <laughs> oh, that's really yeah, you know, it's just called crack. I heard it's really popular. <laughs> you know, like you just right. line, up the, line up the pipe, you know? So people, uh, I think I mentioned on here that I'm wanting to produce uh, content going through the old Nintendo catalog. It's yeah. just perfect that the Switch is doing this. Mm-hmm. So what I think I'm going to do, I, I'm going to hold off on making new content till I get for the for this new project. It's going to be on the back burner until I can afford a Switch. Yeah, I'm going to take out a small loan. Uh, that's why I'm doing the webcam. And hopefully uh there will be a switch coming in the future for this nice are you gonna switch it up i i think i have to if yeah so that i could i don't play my xbox anymore yeah. you know i should see how much i can trade my xbox for gamestop might as well you're not gonna get much out of gamestop my dude you might as well just sell it on ebay or something yeah it, uh, a dude smoking a cigarette behind the gamestop counter be like tree fitted <laughs> You'd be like, I mean, three hundred fifty dollars? No, tree fitted. <laughs> like, what? I just take my system home. Thank you. So, I've been quietly, t- not so quietly, tooting the horn of the Switch pretty much all year. Are you finally starting to see things my way? That this system is kind of nutty and it's kind of yes. low key. Um. Oh, I can get about ninety dollars back for my Xbox Elite. Oh, this is always the issue. I don't I don't have my controller. Oh, yeah. Uh, so subtract fifty bucks from that. So fifty bucks, maybe. Yeah, subtract sixty bucks from that at max. Yeah. But then it's a used controller, so subtract like twenty, thirty dollars from that. Maybe. I don't know. Math. So so we're just gonna be switching it up. So, Cause I plan on getting a switch next year myself for reasons. Because mostly I just want to play uh, 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 Legend of Zelda and Mario. And, so we and so we Smash. cover all the consoles, and we accept that there is a PC master race in the Nerdiverse, right? Wow, wow. Do it, well, I don't accept this truth. Uh, <laughs> well, would you this you truth would say then. that there is there is a planet in the Nerdiverse that is home to a PC race that considers themselves don't go masters? There. <laughs> You know, it's like it's like Simba. Like like Simba's like, what is that dark spot? And Mufasa has to tell him, yeah, we don't go over there. That's where the PC Master Race lives. Well, I can handle that. We don't. Uh, but we go would, there. But would you say that since we're both going to be getting switches, that the Nerdiverse is somewhat oh, <laughs> is it has some allegiance to the Nintendo ends? <laughs> no, I mean. We're of an equal opportunity nerdiverse, my man. I mean, okay. we hold no allegiances to anyone. Sony, Microsoft. So we're like the bankers in uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> I will take your word for it because I'm not a big Game of Thrones head. Well, uh, me either. <laughs> we're more like the Watchers, you know what I mean? From like Marvel Comics where we just, it, when stuff's about to go down, we just say, hey, yes. Galactus, you know that, right? And we He'll, eat a lot of salt. <laughs> we're so salty. Speaking of salt, I'm going to go into my moment of reflection, yes. actually, really quickly. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> it ended perfectly. <laughs> we were practicing. So this week was, like I said, it was very up and down, bittersweet. Because I, it made me reflect on a lot of things, especially the ending of my favorite Let's Play channel, my favorite podcast, my favorite streaming group known as the super best friends 
and they're not a household name, of course, because they're just, you know, they're, uh, they're, there's uh, internet, what YouTube scumbags, but they're, they've been around for almost 10 years. This would have been their ninth year. And honestly, their content was the impetus for this channel. I kind of, you know, learned how to strategize a podcast based from them. And I've loved their stuff for a very long time. And the guys finally gave up the ghost and said the actual unit known as Super Best Friends is ending, has ended. And uh, it made me really think, like, man, is, you know, is this the end of all things? Like, are all friendships, relationships, uh, uh, occupational or otherwise, due, through time, due to erode after a while? Do people just get sick of each other? You know what I mean? Like, made me really think and i was like i I was first thinking about it very negatively because of course i was hurt that you know this part of my daily rigmarole right this you know this uh this comfort blanket is gone you know what i mean but at the same time it's like no you know i mean change is good change is natural change is important and it just makes me want to work harder to reach the levels that those guys reach because they have a rabbit fan base for not being household names. They're not John Cena, you know what I'm saying? They're just these guys. You know, they're just these guys who really love what they love what they did and pretty much, you know, live live long enough to see themselves become the villain. At least within themselves at least within their own unit. Um based upon kind of the backdraft of what's all going on with them. But I just wish those dudes the best. Uh and it's made me really think about this channel. Like the future of it and how to keep from that happening how how to how to keep that creep you know what i mean from burrowing into something creative may it be a podcast or anything that involves a group dynamic you know what i mean how to keep things fresh you know what i mean just made it made me really think about a lot about that going forward like cultivating friendships uh cultivating business relationships it's just it, it made me think a lot i don't know i just yeah. um yeah. Um yeah, it, uh I just started listening to them and they and this happened right after <laughs> Yeah. They were it's done. crazy, right? Like you listened to like a week yeah. after a week before all this jumped off. Yeah. And uh it it is the it's just the way YouTube uh it's the way uh, entertainment goes, I guess. Just uh yeah. there's some people that after a certain period time. they just yeah time is the great eroder er, it erodes things yeah and for some reason i'm getting a stuffy nose talking about it i'm not feeling feelings See? <laughs> you thought i was gonna and, cry you're gonna yeah. cry and uh yeah just it can never happen for mike and i because they're super best friends and you would have to be friends for that to take place. Wow. Wow. I mean, we're masters of the nerdiverse, but it's more like yes, as we long actually as I have don't, a secret hatred for each other. Yeah, as long as I don't cross winner's lines, he won't yeah. try to kill me. It's pretty yeah. much what happens. That's not true. <laughs> we're, we're we're we have to make up a term for people who are friends over the internet. We're internet. We're interwet. We're we're um we're uh frenemies yeah like like batman is superman like ryu and ken you know so we send off super best friends like spock in star trek off into yeah. <laughs> a viking <laughs> funeral we just we put their their user their pot their podcast and their and all of their intellectual properties on a boat and fill it with gold and doubloons and wine and shit and just throw it into the uh the baltic sea and let it burn but uh, but on the on a lighter note, they're still doing their own separate stuff. So mm-hmm. they're they're you know even uh, Pat and Wooly from the show are starting their own podcast at the beginning of the year. Wooly uh, Wooly Wooly Wooly. So you know that has to be rebirth. You know from the ashes of anything, if you're tenacious enough, you can actually have a rebirth, which is the high note, which is the hope that things burn out. It's just everything has a everything has an expiration date, but if you're clever and you're in, you know, you can always rebirth from any situation and come back stronger and, and, and better. So uh, thank you, best friends. 
you guys inspired me to be more, as Josh Groban would say. They lifted me up, you know. Yeah, they lifted, they lifted and hopefully up. with their new like stuff, they can be like the Creed and take me higher. <laughs> Disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into this news, shall we? Oh yeah, that's right. We're a nude, po- <laughs> a news podcast. This is the news yeah. section of the podcast. Uh-huh. You know me. And- Went deep. We went we went ankle deep this week, but that's okay. You, yeah, we're cue the yeah. extra extra. Read all about it, kid. Chimpanzee dad is monkey news. <laughs> the way no, he goes with, stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> of course, we, we have any. <laughs> is, that's a Ricky Gervais comment, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. I love it so okay. much. Thank Stealing you. it because he hasn't used it in like 15, 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> right. That, so that's from the very beginning of podcasting, and then a little before that with uh, uh, Carl and the uh, Stephen and Ricky. Yeah, man. Carl Pilkington died. Yeah. <laughs> Chimpanzee, that that's monkey news. <laughs> and uh, most people don't even know what he says, but Mike figured out what he said because I loved me some Ricky into his brain. Yeah, it's go- it's there forever. It's like that in like the Tootsie Roll song, not the not the Six Nine Boys Tootsie Roll, but the <laughs> old school nine Tootsie. Bros. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Let's go. Tootsie <laughs> Roll, the Tootsie Roll to the left, to the left. Podcast stuff. Uh, <laughs> the, let's do the news. Okay. The news is very thin this week. You know, usually we're used to suckling. You know, chickens of of news. That you know, you cut into it uh-huh. in in the in the in the in the juices flow. This week we have like duck. It's very it's very lean lean meat, though. You know, mm-hmm. it's not spaghetti. It's like zucchini spaghetti, dog. It's not what you not like what you expect. <laughs> it's getting very dark and very very body horror. Uh, speaking of things that seem dark, uh, the defenders. Can't appear on TV or film for at least two years, says Netflix and Disney. That means yeah. all the properties. So <laughs> Jessica Jones, Daredevil, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist are not going to appear anywhere on any level for the next two years. That's 20, 2021, technically, right? Yeah, or they can go the heroes formerly known as the Defenders. <laughs> the Suspenders. <laughs> <laughs> And they just wear like zoot suits, Doug. <laughs> Can you imagine? I don't want to imagine. <laughs> imagine the, the suspenders and they're on Netflix. <laughs> you see Daredevil in, in you know, some real spicy uh suspenders, Doug. It yeah. it works. So what, so what So here's the question. Are they gonna be keeping with the uh original Actors and actresses for these. Are they going to be Probably. holding on them for two years? I doubt it, dude. People got to work. You know what I mean? Like, all these people got to work and live lives. So I think they're waiting. They're going to let two years go by and let the taste of the Netflix stuff wash out of everyone's mouths. And they're going to just recast everyone, dude. Right. That's the grim reality of it. I don't, I don't see them, you know, holding on to these, holding on to these actors who did amazing jobs. You know, outside of Iron Fist, but uh, <laughs> but uh, this cat yeah, has okay. <laughs> hoisted by my own petard. Uh, I don't see them coded onto these people, unfortunately. I think they're going to make the jump to the MCU properly, and not just be kind of outcasts in a way because they were never really tied to the MCU. Yeah, and I think it's going to be a fresh coat of paint, new young actors. Uh, which is sad because TV cats never really get the chance to shine on the big screen. I don't know if it's some kind of weird clause that they don't want to pay them. I don't, <clears throat> that's the one thing I don't like about the comic book film to, to TV industry. It's that it's very, divi- it's very segre- segregated. You know, if you're on TV, if you're on TV, it didn't used to be that way. Cause like Sam Jackson used to show up in, in episodes of agents of shield when it first came out. You know what I mean? So, Back then, there wasn't this crazy thick borderline between the two that they can't coexist. But 
I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Two years is a long time. Yeah. You know? Well, they'll be on vacation for two years, and they're going to be in Tahiti, in the in the Cave of Wonders. Oh man! Uh, speaking of wonderful things, uh, the the Debatable. there was a uh, uh, this year there was a CW crossover called Elseworlds that I loved because it had Batwoman and Superman and the Flash and Green Arrow. And all the good DC live action goodiness. And they've announced that next year's crossover is actually going to be the Crisis of Infinite Earths, which to non DC Comics fans may be like, oh, okay, that's a cool little name. Uh, no big deal. But if you're a DC fan for a very long time, you know that the Crisis of Infinite Earths. What? <laughs> is dang it winter you wake up and you listen to this because <laughs> i very rarely get to talk about comics on this podcast oh, sorry go on comic book movies all the time but i can't i'm, I'm going to talk about the crisis of infinite earths all right dang it <laughs> <laughs> okay go on crisis of infinite i'm sorry I, I i'm actually what was that i don't know did you hear what that was it what was, was was that a was that a krampus <laughs> Anyway, uh, that was cool. I was talking about that one time that uh, I got yelled at by the owner of Stone Brewery on Twitter. Really? <laughs> yeah, because uh, I was arguing with my buddy who loves uh, uh, Darren, actually, if you remember Darren from the MLT and Reviews podcast uh-huh. episodes. I asked Darren, I was, I was looking at you know the Stone Brewery logo and it looked like a Krampus to me. And I was like, Darren, is that a Krampus? He was like, no, man. It's a gargoyle. Right? It's stone gargoyle. Stone brewery synergy, right? This is oh, why I we'll never like... get stone brewery. Ironside. No, they, 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 yeah. Well, Michael, Mike G did this. MLTN didn't do this. So hopefully you <laughs> won't remember me. But I just randomly tweeted at the guy. I was like, hey, stone brewery. Is your logo a Krampus? I have a bet. And this guy wrote back so dry. He was like, it is not a Krampus. <laughs> That's all he said. He didn't even tell me what it was. And I, and I think got like 4,000 like 4, retweets. I was like, oh, no. But I do, apolog- <laughs> I do apologize. I am curious what it is Crisis on Infinite Earths. Thank so. you. Crisis on Infinite Earths is, the I would say, the one of the most influential crossovers in DC history. It's uh, kind of like Marvel's equivalent to the Infinity War, you know, with, with Thanos and the the six Infinity Gems, as they were. Now they're called Stones. But what Crisis of Infinite Earths is, is that for those, uh, DC has 52 universes it's called the multiverse. And every number is a different kind of retweet, retweet, uh, retweaking of the, the, the common things, you know, there's an earth where it's just all, where the, all the genders are switched. So it's super woman and bat woman and, uh, you know, all the, you know, it's all flipped. There's a universe where the flash is the main hero and Superman's not even around. There's a hero where there's a world where our universe rather, where it's set into 1600s. You have Gotham by gaslight and all that crazy stuff. Would this explain, uh, like, uh, Batman and feudal Japan? Exactly. Batman Ninja. Listen to that review. That movie was insane. But yes, there's also a universe within the multiverse where it's set in feudal Japan and Batman's a ninja. Batman Ninja. Watch that movie. It's nuts. And all these universes together come to fight the Anti-Monitor, which is the big, big bad kind of like Thanos in, for Marvel heads out there. And why this is so big is because if DC really wanted to, they can get so nutty with this crossover, but I doubt they will. <laughs> like, there's no way they're going to have like Ben Affleck or our Jim or Henry Cavill there's show. No way. There's no way, right? Gal Gadot no way. on the CW show, right? There's no way, right? That's stupid. But that's the kind <laughs> of uh, rumor mill that can run with something like Crisis of Infinite Earths because. All these things can coexist. You know, Aquaman's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see that this weekend. Crisis of Infinite Earths, that Aquaman could just show up on the CW and help fight the Anti-Monitor. <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's an unprecedented... That title alone kind of breaks the wall down. Like, any 
anything could happen. Like uh, Smallville characters could show up. You know what I mean? Dean Cain and freaking, uh, uh, you know, the adventures of Lois and Clark could show up. You know what I mean? Like anything could happen. Michael Keaton could show up. Uh, Christian Bell, you know, it, it just, it's just that name carries so much weight with DC fans uh, because it's a liter- it's a literal anything could happen kind of scenario. Do I, I, I humbly doubt that that's going to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised if you got some kind of nutty cameos in there, especially with some of these cats who haven't really been in effect. Like, I would freak out if I saw like Val Kilmer in a Batman suit just show up for like a split second. Right. <laughs> in Crisis of Infinite Earths or or Linda Carter show up as one as a as a older Wonder Woman. That'd be that'd be dope, my man, you know. So that's my comic book moment of this of the quarter. So I'll talk about comics again toward my birthday in March when the next <laughs> quarter is nice and going. Uh we're still on comics for a second, because this is not really a Something I want to go into too deeply. Uh, just a couple of things before I go into the big news of the week. One, the final DLC for Spider for Marvel Spider Man on PS4 is coming out, I believe, to- tonight or tomorrow, the twenty first or something like that. It's called Silver Lining. It's it was a three part DLC. Uh, so cop that. I can't wait to kind of see how that that story ends. Uh, what did you think of the other DLC? I'm just curious. Uh, Nuke War. The first one was lukewarm, and the second one was a code. It was not that good. It was uh, the first one had to deal with Black Cat, and it was really interesting, kind of how they portrayed the character in this new universe. And you got to had to interact with her and do fights with her. It was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second DLC was really formulaic and very annoying, kind of like you had a lot of ad boss fights, and just uh, it was just kind of tedious, and it didn't really have a good payoff. But I'm hoping that the DLC closes out strong uh, for this final DLC that they're offering called Silver Lining, which should probably bring back Silver Sable and Black Cat to fight off Hammerhead in the final confrontation of the DLC so that Insomniac can focus on the, on a sequel rather than having to bury themselves with DLC and games as a service uh, type uh, mentalities that most video games are going by nowadays. Uh, by the way, I hate that. I hate games as a service. Mm-hmm. As I, you know, as I purchased two B for for Soul Calibur tonight, I'm such a hypocrite. But uh, <laughs> but I'm really excited for the ending of this uh, uh, DLC, and it's very it's not that expensive. So I'll let you guys know how it feels uh, next week when once I get my hands on it. And secondly. Uh, Street Fighter Five at the end of Capcom Cup last night or the night before introduced a new character named Kage. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Evil Ryu. For those who played like the Alpha series and Street Fighter Four, mm-hmm. not much to say. I'm not really a big fan of his design. He plays like Evil Ryu. What do you want? What do you want from me? I'm, no. See, I should have waited to take a nap during this. <laughs> yes, this is where you make the snore noises because it's a very uninteresting uh, addition. Uh, Shotos, we get we have enough Shotos, ladies and gentlemen. Don't need more. But hey, someone's going to get a kick out the character, so more power to them. So the news of the week, which I found interesting, because normally it's winter that brings esports to the podcast, but I'm going to bring it this time. Ooh, ooh, we're flipping it. We'll flip you. We'll flip you for real. Uh, and that is that Blizzard is scaling down on Heroes of the Storm. Uh, they were going to have like apparently they're going to have a huge esports push for Heroes of the Storm this year, and Blizzard has other ideas, so they're scaling back on that game, maybe sunsetting it. What do you think about that? Well, Heroes of the Storm. I mean, first you have the original MOBA, you have Dota Two, that is doesn't really take too much of the market, but the fact is that that is out there. And that would probably be the second alternative before the big one, which is League of Legends. Right. The Heroes of the Storm was was always uh, from people who I've talked to in the MOBA community considered like uh, League of Legends light, which is unfortunate because I think Heroes has a, a better uh, audience in regards to you know the characters. Like you're 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 pre- it's like why. Some, 
people like uh, Mario Party games because you get to play your favorite Mario characters. Yeah. Um, and I would not be surprised if they make a Mario MOBA in the future. Anyways. <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't already, to be honest. Yeah, that would blow my mind. So uh, I it's hard for me to think they're going to scale it down because I think they're still having competitions. It's still big in South Korea or just in Asia. It it's just like they're they're probably going to I I predict they're going to have another project and that's why they're scaling that down and bringing another one in. Right. That's what I think. Yeah. I think anytime yeah a game this it, big, it, you know. Right. And they they've been advertised if you go to their like job area of the Blizzard, they've been advertising an unknown game project for a while. Um for looking for people to be hired for that. And I haven't heard anything about that. So it could be that they're scaling down Heroes of the Storm and focusing on this other game that's coming out that might have some connections to it. But we'll see. That's cool. I mean, it's like fighting games. You know what I mean? Like after a while, some fighting games have a longer lifespan than others. Like NetherRealm right. games notoriously have like a two-year lifespan and that's it. You know what I mean? Like. Injustice 2 was around for two, three years tops, and now we're talking about Mortal Kombat 11. Where on the other half, Tekken 7 has been around for like four or five years now. You know what I mean? Like it's a super long time frame. Like Street Fighter 5 has been around for about that long time. So I think if they're scaling down a game, like you said, is very still very popular, maybe it's going to get a facelift. Maybe they're going to do some things to it to spice it up, so to speak. And like you said, it is the Smash Brothers of Blizzard games, right? It's just everybody's in it. Right, so right. Maybe it's time for them to. Maybe Blizzard's starting to understand that war, war, the Warcraft formula doesn't work for everything. You know what I mean? Uh, so, maybe like I would rather them shut it down and do something new than literally beat the dead horse. You know what I mean? Or I hate using that terminology. Or just make it extend it longer than its lifespan is needed. I always wanted to get in a MOBA. I just it just seems it doesn't seem very fun. You know what I mean? I don't know. Just the people who are going to yeah, bite my head up I mean, there, it, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Well, it's in, there's, uh, I don't know how people do it, but there's people who are able to play that game while doing other stuff. Uh, like they could be on their phone while clicking away. Um, there's, I, I can't say that it's brain dead. There's a lot of strategy that's involved. Um, the best way that it's been described to me is that there's a steep learning curve and then it kind of evens out at the end. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Any game where but, I can be dead yeah. set in battle and also watch a boil and watch a, and fry an egg, I don't think that's in, that engaging. <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying? Like along and along with the issue with a lot of with multiplayer games that are that don't just rely on team on team play, but it's like, if you don't play as a team, you're going to fail is that you have a community that is not known for working well with others. <laughs> I want, I want to say that's a whole nother can of worms, dude. Like there's some yeah. communities that are very open. Like I, I, yes. I heard the Warframe community is very open, you know, they're just like, right. Hey, so I should just say like league of legends and overwatch the, the team that, that type of team, I don't like I never wanted to do competitive Overwatch like ever because yeah. I just won I tried it once and it was just they were po- bad they were uh they were uh, ganging up on this poor mercy and it just was, it was uh-huh. gross. And I just was like it's horrible. Like I don't want to be part of any of the scene, dude. They don't cultivate anything though. You know, it's like get it together. Like it's like get good, you know, or don't play and it's just like People don't, scenes don't grow that way, yeah, which makes me kind of wonder why Overwatch is kind of going the way it is. But it's hard to police that kind of activity, right? Right. It kind of makes me want to do like an in- introspective on to- on toxicity and fandom. You know what I mean? Like, how do you fix that? And that can span across games, movies, anything that has a fan base. Sports. Right, anything with a fan base can this can happen too. So I don't know. Uh, uh, esports is going to esports. You know, what I mean, it's it's its own 
this this organism is grown big enough to where I don't I don't see it going anywhere. And I think esports is not always positive for a certain for games. You know what I mean? Because it just it adds an unnecessary pressure to something that's supposed to be fun. You know, like, be, but I don't know. We'll see. Only the future can tell on that. Oh man, that's the news. Anything else that comes to mind, Winter, that you want to talk about? Not really. Uh, check me really? out on Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, <laughs> uh, Trashmuck I I I. Yeah, uh, I try to post there daily, and you know, keep stay active. Yeah, drink your uh, electrolytes, guys. Uh, I try to post uh, as frequently as possible on our Twitter, which is at mnerdiverse. So you'll see polls there. You'll see funny pictures. You'll see us asking questions. And, of course, podcast episodes will be going up there as well. A new uh, MOTN Ready uh, Random Select is coming up. Probably not tomorrow, but probably Thursday, if I'm dating this podcast, which is usually a no-no. But Random Selects, a new episode of Random Selects coming out where we uh, pit two random movies against each other and decide which one is better. Uh, so please look forward to that. Also, it's towards the end of the year and we have a lot of planning for next year. So content's not going to slow up, but it's not going to be as breakneck as it was in October and November. But that's only planning and revving us up for 2019 which I predict is going to be a huge year for, um, for MLTN and everyone who's associated with this channel. Uh, news, uh, hopefully some new sponsors, definitely a new uh, distribution system, which is something that I just got worried about. So that's Ooh. going to be updating as well. So I'm excited slash worried about that because anything that's your baby, you know, change is weird, but i um, very, yeah, definitely. I'll talk to you. We'll talk about more of that in the future. Uh, excited for Aquaman. I want to see that. Been hearing great things about Enter the Spider-Verse. I really want to see that. Hearing like abnormally great things like best superhero movie of all time. Like Oh uh, right. Right. And I'm like, what? <laughs> really? So <laughs> I gotta see down. it for myself. <laughs> like I, <laughs> settle down, down Gwees, you know, like I gotta see that for myself. So Maybe I'll have an opinion of it next week. Maybe I won't. We'll yeah. see. Uh, yeah. You just right? you just you just angered up my blood. You just <laughs> angered up my blood. <laughs> what tar nation? Huh? That's what cats are saying, man. I'm hearing a lot of it on the interweb, so I gotta be my own. I gotta check it out, man. I gotta see what the big hubbub's about, bub. Man, you have any let. Uh, last thoughts before we close this bad boy out you don't need to say that movies are the best all of all time okay people (laughs) you can make your point without saying this is the best superhero movie of all time just say it's good okay best best superhero so you're just gonna like throw christopher nolan's trilogy in the trash garbage come on people (laughs) winner what, what is up with you? What is the best cheeseburger you've ever had in your entire life? The one my mama always makes. Well, that's How the about best, that? Right? <laughs> that's the best, right? <laughs> People live in such Don't a worry. bubble, you know what I mean? It's so weird. Like Yeah. That's, what you know, I, that's my that that's just my parting words of wisdom. You don't have to say it's the best one ever, okay? Man, we're a culture of hyperbole, dog. You know what I mean? Everything is yeah. the worst or the best or like there's this whole thing out. People are hating on the Spider-Man video game because Insomniac won't put the, the, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man costume in the game. So people are saying the game is trash. The whole yeah. entire game. Yeah. That's like one of the best games of the year is now trash because they've, they didn't have the development. Uh, they didn't choose to develop a downloadable costume for one look. So the whole game is trash. So the whole game out. Yes, and I this have is... to admit, I've done it in. The, I've done it some mo- sometimes. I hey, your your masters of the nerdiverse can at times be at fault. All right, your masters do bleed. Yeah, we're not. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But just be better than your masters. <laughs> be better than us. Don't do as don't do as we do. Do as we say, as my yes. mother would say, but as yelling at me. 
But yeah, guys, like, like Winter said, I totally agree. You don't have to live in a world where something has to be better than the other thing. You could just enjoy it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or not enjoy it. It doesn't have to be better or worse. You know, yeah. except unless it's Venom, the movie starring Tom Hardy. That's the worst. <laughs> So well, that's without doubt. <laughs> yeah, that goes without, that goes without saying, right? Water's wet, right? So other than that, you don't have to live in a hyperbole bubble. Can it just be good? No. Can it just be you're not? Can it just be that it's not your cup of tea? No, you're right. Because people have to violently argue to the death and die on the hill that no, I'm okay. right, you're wrong. That's just we should we should end this because this is never going to end. It's never going <laughs> to end. The yeah. Never the, the never ending podcast. <laughs> ah. <laughs> if you want more weird Mike G singing, you can donate to our Patreon, <laughs> where I will be putting out a mixtape, uh, and with the uh, very very small donation of one dollar a month. You can support this podcast so that we can have more wacky episodes like this one. And if you want to support us non-monetarily, you can also like our con- like our content, comment on our episodes, subscribe to our channels. I am happy to say that out of out of our rate our rating on iTunes is a solid five out of five. They like us, winner. People like us. They really like me. They, they like they like us, dude. So continue to. Uh, visit our iTunes. If you're listening to this via iTunes, please leave a rating. Leave us a comment. Tell us how we're doing, bad or good. If you want to blemish our perfect record, do so. It's fine. We'll figure it out. Uh, And we'll continue to make this show better. I have been, of course, your host, Mike G. And I've been your host, Winter Trash Monk III. Aye, aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye. (laughs) <laughs> and we will always ask you to take that one step beyond. Mm-hmm.